Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. You know, growing up, I remember seeing a trailer for a Rob Reiner film called North. Even though I never saw it, it looked harmless enough. Sort of a quirky comedy about a boy who divorces his neglecting parents and searches the world for better ones. It just looked like any other average family comedy. But what really drew my attention to it was the Siskel and Ebert review. It's junk. First class junk. It's a movie that makes me cringe even when I'm sitting here thinking about it. It's, it's embarrassing. You feel unclean as you're sitting there. I hated this movie as much as any movie we've ever reviewed in the 19 years we've been doing this show. Damn. That is harsh. I mean, these are the guys that reviewed Batman and Robin, Kazam, the Super Mario Brothers movie, and the Tom and Jerry movie, and this is the movie that made them feel unclean? What the hell could be in it that could be so bad? Come on, kids, let's find out! Yay! Okay, so it starts out with North, played by Elijah Wood, as he listens to his parents argue, who are, oddly enough, played by Jason Alexander and Julia Lewis Dreyfus. And I was inspecting pants before you even started wearing them. Stop over in Atlanta, like I that said, I killing. forgot more about belt loops than you'll ever know! You're killing in the of Georgia line! North starts to, for some reason, have a panic attack. I didn't have to book the Himmelmans non-stop to I said, Boca listen, during Einstein the arithmetic. Do you know who I am? <laughs> Dude, kid, your parents are arguing. All parents do that. It's not like you're possessed by the One Ring of Power. As he loses consciousness more and more, we hear the narrator, played by Bruce Willis, explain why. Yes, North was having a difficult time with his folks, and it was putting a damper on what was, in all other respects, a very successful life. Yeah, nice read there, Bruce. It's like he knew this movie was a stinker, so he tried to get over with as quickly as possible. North was in a jam. He really didn't relate to his parents. Next page. He decided he needed a change, so he roamed the earth until he found the parents he was looking for. Where's my check? There it is. Gotta go! Oh, well, that shut him up. <laughs> What's the matter? Hey, loosen his what? pants. Wait, what? Hey, loosen his what? pants. Wait, what? Hey, loosen his what? pants. Okay. All right. You can't let a line like that go by and not have somebody make fun of it. So, here are my jokes. Number 10. Loosen his what? pants. Or take his shirt off. Either way, I'm getting the show. Number 9. Loosen his what? pants. I hate it when I have to direct the strippers. Number 8. Loosen his what? pants. Damn it, man, I'm a doctor, not a pedophile. Number 7. Loosen his what? pants. Isn't that the slogan for an ambla? Number 6. Loosen his what? pants. But just skip over the turning your head and coughing. Number 5. Loosen his what? pants. I always forgive we circumcised him. Number 4. Loosen his what? pants. Now we're going to see why his last name is Wood. Number 3. Loosen his what? pants. Elaine wants to see if he's truly sponge worthy. Number 2. Loosen his what? pants. You know, when you said we were having the other white meat, this isn't what I had in Mind. And the number one joke to be made about this scene is... Loosen his what? pants. If anyone asks, Art Vandalay did it. Play me off, Paul! So it turns out North is sort of a child prodigy, loved by all except his own parents. So he relaxes in his secret place, which is ironically in the middle of a display room, which everyone can see, so... not really secret. When he comes across... Bruce Willis as a bunny. I really wish I was making that up. Who are you? I'm an Easter Bunny. And I'm a hobbit. Blow me. Oh, well, it's a holiday. How about yours? Not lately. I had a real bad game today. How bad was it? I walked nine Panthers and hit my coach's wife with a wild pitch. It's my folks. They don't know what a good thing they got in you, right? Exactly. And they're the only ones. You should hear what all the other parents say about me. North's room is always clean. North always looks both ways. North never spoils his appetite. North flosses. North was crucified for our sins. When are you going to make that kind of commitment? You realize, of course, that you're not alone. What do you mean? Look, kid, it's because I'm in a bunny suit doesn't mean I haven't stumbled yeah. across... Yeah, it does. Well, whatever you're about to say, being in a bunny suit pretty much destroys all credibility. If you want my advice, and I know you didn't ask for it, go home make up and goodbye and that was it nothing special i just left him there in that secret spot of his just him and his thoughts and some hallucinogenic brownies that seem to be taking effect what a scoop ah! a kid 
becoming a free agent. It's brilliant, North! Mwah! Thanks, prepubescent Larry King. So he tells his friend Wincho, who works at the school paper, about his plan to possibly divorce his parents. But he decides to give them one last chance by giving them a call to talk to them. Yes. So he places a call to the pants factory where his father works, where... Looks like that fire Wait, be a what the hell? Why is there a... Huh? What? What? What the hell's going on in the background? Who owns this pants factory? Willy Wonka? That's bad. After his dad blows him off, North finally decides to cut the leash and officially divorce his folks, hiring a lawyer played by John Lovitz. Come on, Andy, his folks are gonna fight it. Of course they are. They're not gonna take this lying down. Get it? They said lying down and now they're lying down. I just wanted to explain that because, you know, it's so subtle. So they go to court where the judge, played by Alan Arkin, is about as plausible as that idiot who judged the Anna Nicole Smith trial. Even though both sides will be saying things and I will be hearing them, it is still not a hearing. No doubt, you'll all be hearing the same things that I am hearing. That's your privilege. However, once both sides have been heard, then it'll be my job to pass judgment. Obviously, you can all pass judgment too, but it won't count. You know, it was a very bold move on Reiner's part to deprive this movie of charm. They could have had a couple of clever moments, but this director said, nope, that's what they'd be expecting us to do. I made myself clear to the defense. Your Honor. The defense rests. Wow. Uh, I mean, wow. That is the worst joke I've ever heard in my entire life. They did it! They did it! They made the worst joke of all time! Give them a round of applause, everybody! It's incredible! <laughs> So, whew. North has the summer to find his new parents or they'll apparently put him in an orphanage. And if any of you has ever seen the little rascals, ho, 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 you know that's no day at the beach. I like to judge things by 1920s comedies. You know, instead of those useless facts or statistics. So North first heads to Texas, where he tries spending time with his first set of parents played by Dan Aykroyd and Reba McIntyre. Well, I reckon we'll wake up early and eat, and then we'll dig for oil and eat. And then we'll rope some doggies, bust a few bronchs, and then maybe we'll grab a bite to eat. Wow. I mean, there's stereotypes, and then there's this. I mean, this isn't even how people in Texas dress. This isn't even how cowboys dress. This is like how ice skaters dressing up like cowboys dress. Sorry. So North notices that his new folks really want to fatten him up. But why? Then you'll be like Buck. Who? Our first son. Biggest boy this big state's ever seen. Why, he could eat more in one day than anyone else could eat in a whole month. That's why Buck hated February. Where is Buck? He died in a stampede. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, needless to say, it was a mighty big loss. Did I miss something here? I mean, what was the point of that conversation? Was something funny said? They have a son, the son dies, so... So what?! They have a son, the son is fat, he dies in a stampede, so where's the humor?! In fact, I'm gonna play a little game with you. It's a wonderful game to play with a lot of really bad movies, and it's simply called... Spot the Joke! Alright, listen closely. There has to be some humor in here somewhere. He could eat more in one day than anyone else could eat in a whole month. No, nothing funny yet. That's why Buck hated February. Not even a giggle. He died in a stampede. I'm so sorry. Needless to say, it was a mighty big loss. Oh, wait a minute! Big loss! Because he's fat! And dead! And fat, dead people are apparently hilarious! 35 seconds of build-up for a fat, dead person joke. Oh, I hope you enjoyed playing. Tune in next time, which will probably just be in a few seconds. Ready, Paul? Ready, Ma! We had a son who was trampled by a ton of longhorns. Hello! Song? Yeah, apparently there's a song in this movie, even though there's not one anywhere else. 
Is it a funny song? No. Till you can bigger than the big old Texas sky. Oh, this must have been that missing Beauty and the Beast song, Be Our Hostage. You'll grow tall and play football, be famous. You'll grow more on a chain of stores, marry Betty Lou. This is awful. I haven't heard music this bad since Woody Woodpecker sang Ride of the Valkyries at the Lyric Opera. <laughs> Another rib, son? No, but a legitimate joke would be nice. So North sits and thinks about what the flying fuck he just saw when we're approached by an old familiar face. That's right, it's Bruce Willis again. He's a cowboy now. You know, down here in these parts, we got a saying. Sometimes when you're panning for gold, you gotta try more than one stream. I'm familiar with another saying. Stop following me or I'll call the police. So his next stop is Hawaii, where he comes across Governor Ho and Mrs. Ho, who also want to adopt him. In Hawaii, aloha means hello and goodbye. Doesn't that get confusing? Only when you're firing someone. Ah, oh, well, aloha. What do you mean I'm fired? So, are there as many ethnic stereotypes in Hawaii as there are in Texas? Do volcano gods eat virgins? Well, here in the islands, we have only 12 letters in our alphabet. Well, I didn't know that. Well, sure, just think about it. Waikiki, Honolulu. Well, that's very interesting, but how does that help me get into college? Well, since we don't use the letters B, C, D, and F, you're pretty much guaranteed to get straight A's. Good gravy, the jokes on Happy Meals are funnier than this. But North is also wondering why the governor and his wife want to adopt him in the first place. Hawaii is a lush and fertile land. In fact, there's only one barren area on all of our islands. Unfortunately, it's Mrs. Holt. That's the worst thing ever uttered by humans. This movie is pure evil. I mean, what is up with these jokes? They are horrible! You know what? I don't even think Rob Reiner was paying attention. I think he just wanted to go on vacation and somehow get paid for it. So he made a cheap-ass movie shouting cut every couple of minutes while he sat around swinging on a hammock. That at least would be a more believable excuse. Please give a big warm Hawaiian welcome to our new pride and joy, our son, North! Son, that'll be in every airport along every highway. My crack? What gives you the right to show my crack in every highway? I agree, that needs an answer. I'm the governor of a state that's running a little low on self-esteem. He's right. People from the mainland just don't care about Hawaii. Excuse me, but what does this have to do with my crack? Again, a legit point. If you lived here in Hawaii, people would be more inclined to settle here. I don't know. I... I need some time to think, okay? Yeah, it's like, what the hell does any of this have to do with this motherfucking crack? How would that promote tourism? It's disgusting! Whenever people visit Hawaii, they want them to think of pale boy butt? What is this movie's fascination with Elijah Wood's nether regions? Oh, by the way, Bruce Willis pops up again. Yeah, I guess he's supposed to be like the mysterious mentor that follows him around, but I don't know. I think he's more like the annoying mushroom that says our princess is in another castle. You just want to smack him every time he appears. But I don't think I should settle for parents who have to show my most private crevice on a billboard to make them feel better about themselves. That's nothing. You should see what Governor Palin is doing with her kids. And speaking of Alaska, that's where North is off to next, where the plane lands on the ground and... Wait, what? Where's the joke? I don't get it! The plane touches the window? Why is that funny? Answer me! So he gets to the Eskimo village where, oh, god, this isn't inaccurate at all, is it? It's like if the Polar Express meets the Flintstones. I'll give the film credit, though. At least they did get Native American Graham Greene to play an Eskimo here. I mean, it's not like they got Kathy Bates spray-painted her face and slapped on a black wig like a minstrel show. No! No! You go back to your room movie until you learn something about being racially sensitive!
And just when you think this movie couldn't possibly get more insulting, just watch what they do with their grandfather, played by Good Burger survivor, Abe Fagoda. What do you mean it's time to flow? Well, when an Eskimo gets too old or weak to contribute to society... You're not. The whole family gets together and everybody walks to the ocean. You're really not. And then the revered old Eskimo is proudly placed on an ice floe and set out to sea so he can die with dignity. Yes! Apparently Eskimos get in line to shove off their old farts while a ticket holder moves the line along while they say goodbye. Good fuckity God! Oh, don't worry about him, North. He's had a great life, and he's happy to set sail before he starts embarrassing himself. Come on, let's go, pal. This is no surprise to you, is it? You Next. Let's go. Don't act like you don't know what's going on here. Come on, let's go. First of all, when this was done, it was done in times of famine, not just because they were old. Second, this was incredibly rare and only done as a last resort. Third, this happened eons ago. Nobody does it anymore. I mean, did you do any research? Do you know anything about how the world works? Read a fucking book! Meanwhile, back at home, the real parents of North are put on display in a museum because I guess they're still comatose. And apparently, Rob Reiner thinks this is still funny. I'll now take questions. Yes, how long are you going to milk this joke? Oh, and remember that newspaper kid who printed the story originally? Yeah, the film suddenly decided he's a villain. You see, all the kids in the world are now threatening to leave their folks and hire John Lovitz as their lawyer, which somehow propels him and his new partner, the child newspaper editor, into being the most powerful and richest people in the world. Okay. As we speak, grown-ups across this great land of ours are feeling humiliated. They blame North for all their frustrations. Do you realize how many of those angry parents would like nothing better than to do away with our little friend? My god, it's a young Dick Cheney! But for North to be martyred, doesn't he have to be killed by one of those angry parents? Well, maybe we'll get lucky. It is Dick Cheney! Ah! So North then travels to, oh great, we're making fun of the Amish now, wonderful, classy. I'm thy new father, and this good woman who art my wife are thy new mother. And these are thy new brothers who art named Ezekiel. I have always dreamt of a life without the ever-present nuisance of electricity. Uh, uh, just let me grab something from the plane. Floor it! Well, at least their cruelty to the Amish was short. So he goes to Africa, where of course everyone is in a grass hut, drops by China, where everyone hails him as some sort of emperor, why don't you have him just drop by France, where everyone wears berets, smokes, drinks wine, and every TV channel has 24 hours of Jerry Lewis as the next scene, isn't it? <laughs> you are scum! Finally, North seems to come across a nice family with a father played by John Ritter. They have a white picket fence, eat dinner together, and even gave birth to Scarlett Johansson. That was nice of them. Yup, they treat North like he's one of their own. The only downside is this would be his new brother. It was a darling story, Mark. So while his new family seems downright perfect, North, for some reason, still isn't satisfied. North, we just don't understand why you're leaving. Neither do I. The script forgot to give me a reason, so... Bye. Just gotta be alone. We're going to miss you, too. <laughs> and so will Oliver. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing your ass at Lost in Translation. It's gonna look great. So he walks back to New York, uncertain of what he's gonna do, when he suddenly bumps into... He sits down next to a very beautiful young lady. Shh. If you walk by quietly, maybe he won't notice you. Son of a bitch. Joey Fingers, nice to see you. And you are? North. Always been one of my favorite directions. Huh. This film is so bad, you'd think they would have used that joke earlier. But nope. They were saving it. So North wonders what he's gonna do when the mythical powers of Willis's wisdom finally puts everything into perspective. You realize something that takes most people a whole lifetime to figure out. And some people never figure it out at all. That a bird in the hand is always greener than the grass under the other guy's bushes. I hate you. So Willis drops him off at the airport so North can meet up with his folks who I guess finally snapped out of their coma. And remember kid, if you can't stand the heat, stay out of Miami. Well, what does that metaphor mean? What metaphor? You ever been down there in August? Your balls stick to your leg like crazy glue. You know, for kids! Where do you think you're going? I'm going home. Not on this plane, you're not. 
Why not? It says here you're dead. But I'm not. How can I be sure? I'm standing here talking to you. I know, and that scares me. And since I don't scare you... And one uninspired comedy routine later. What's he doing here? He's trying to get back to his old parent. It'll ruin everything! Let's get him! So the kids chase him down when suddenly... Okay, wait a minute. That was two minutes without a Willis cameo. That's not even enough time to change costumes! What are you? Some kind of guardian angel? Well, I guess you can say that. Because in a manner of speaking, we at Federal Express feel that we are guardians. Guardians of your most important packages and priority communiques. Federal Express. Our creepy Bruce Willis stalkers are here to serve you. So Willis finally gets him home. As it turns out, his parents aren't there. They're at his secret spot, which apparently wasn't so secret if they knew about it, waiting for him to show. And who else should be there but the judge, of course, wearing the robe and everything. All right, you wait here. I'll go look for him. Good idea. Bad idea. Let me remind you, the ruling stipulates that North is supposed to be in the arms of both parents. That's two parents and four arms. You know, no offense, Judge, but I put more stock in the dancing Edos. They at least had a little bit more class than you do. So North rushes to a secret spot as the spawn of Cheney apparently has a henchman there waiting to kill him. Just how powerful is this kid? Does he also have an army of demons at his beck and call? I'm the Hapling! Oh, I'm the Hapling! So North rushes towards his parents, the henchman gets out his gun, pulls the trigger, and... It was all a dream. What? You actually went to the lowest common denominator and made it all a dream? You ass of shit! You still here? I must have fallen asleep. Come on, I'll give you a ride home. Along with all the other great lessons of this movie, take rides from strangers. Especially if they dress up like the Easter Bunny. That's a good idea. Thanks a lot, mister. Don't mention it, kid. And remember, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Yup. An hour and a half of unfunny jokes, ethnic stereotypes, and hate filled stupidity just for something you'd see on a welcome mat. I hope you enjoyed this journey of racist insensitivity. Allow us to replace the credits with the words, We're sorry a hundred times! This movie is amazing. It actually goes beyond belief. In today's PC world, for a film like this to get made, let alone for kids, it's scary as shit! How could anyone green like this? How could anyone sign on for it? How could they get all these big name stars for such an ugly piece of cinematic prostitution? Maybe Rob Reiner thought he had too many good films and he had a bad film to even it out. Personally, I now see why Siskel and Ebert hated this film so much. And I really agree with Roger Ebert when he ended his review by saying, I hated this movie. Hated, 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 hated this movie. Hated it. Hated every simpering, stupid, vacant, audience-insulting moment of it. You're too fucking nice! I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember it, so you don't have to! Hated it. Inutile dire che è stata una gran perdita.